Hello friends and welcome back to another reading vlog. This one's a little bit special and requires a proper introduction because this month I am reading three books that I got through a book subscription service. I'm really excited about this one first because it's based in Australia which means I can afford the postage and the other cool thing is that they send you secondhand books. So last month when I came across this company I kind of signed up, um, I selected to be sent three books every month for the next six months and then you kind of go through a little process of letting them know what genres you're interested in, you can also link them to your Goodreads account just to give them an idea of what to send you. And I just thought it was such a fun idea and I am trying to read more fiction so I thought this was a great way for me to do that especially when sometimes I just have no idea what to read and also I want to kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit. So I signed up to this, I got my three books, I want to show them to you, talk you through what I said I was interested in and how these books stack up against that. I will say first of all that this box came beautifully presented like each book was wrapped up individually all the padding was shredded book paper it looked like pages from books I also did receive a lovely little handwritten note letting me know that um, they had trouble I didn't link my Goodreads account properly basically um, and so that if I'd already read any of the books that they sent me they'd make it up to me next month which I thought was really sweet now this I paid with my own money everything like I found it on Instagram I paid for it this is not sponsored or anything I just thought it was a cool service and I thought this would make a fun video. So as I said, there's a few different options. I chose the six month subscription with three books each month. And then I was asked, what type of books do I like? And then you can just choose as many categories as you want to give them a picture of which books to send you. And there's things like travel, YA, fantasy, YA, contemporary. I selected Surprise Me. And I also selected science fiction, women's fiction, Australian literature, modern literature and classics. But they've got quite a lot of options so it gives you a good selection. Step two was to uh, select some of the themes that we're interested in. Um, again you can choose as many as you like. Again I chose Surprise Me and then I also picked political, good versus evil, satire, love, family, female leads, suspenseful, dystopian, award-winning and light-hearted. Then you have an option to just list some of the last books that you've really enjoyed and I put There Was Still Love, Murderbot Diaries, The Lucky Galah, Red at the Bone, The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and <laughs> Disappeared, Split Tooth, Foreign Soil, Surfacing. They were just some books that I know I've read in the last year or so that were off the top of my head that I quite liked. And the last one was another text box just to kind of input anything else you wanted them to know about your reading preferences. And I said that I work in an esoteric bookshop so I have the spirituality philosophy non-fiction books covered but I wanted to try your service to explore more fiction especially a bit more Australian fiction. So that's kind of what I said I wanted from them. Now let's take a look at the books that I received for my first month. The first one I unwrapped is massive and I'm a little bit nervous because I'm very I'm a very slow reader um, and this is what I got it's huge um, it is Skywood claim the stars by Brandon Sanderson and according to the back um, it is the first in a series uh, I don't tend to love getting involved in series just because I feel like I'm already involved in a lot and this one looks like it's gonna be a commitment but I did ask them to surprise me according to Goodreads uh, this has a very good star rating of 4.53 out of nearly 60,000 ratings that's huge now our second book that I opened up was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller wow this book has 191,000 ratings on Goodreads um, and it's got an average of 4.34 stars. And I think this is kind of one of those books that's inspired by a bit of a spin-off or retelling of some Greek myths. This is not the sort of book that I would normally gravitate towards, not the sort of book I would normally pick up, but that's kind of the point of this whole book service thing for me. So curious about this one. Now this one I was most excited about because this one is Australian and I specifically said in my notes that I want to read more Australian fiction. So I was very excited they included this one. It's The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. Now this is a book I feel like I remember seeing it on bookshelves a lot a couple of years ago um, but I never picked it up. I remember thinking it was very pretty though. It says on the back a captivating novel about how our untold stories haunt us and the stories we tell ourselves in order to survive. Now this book has the fewest ratings out of all of them which makes sense if it's, if it's an Australian book. Um, it has 8,200 ratings and it's got an overall average of 4.08. So these are the three books 
uh, from my first month with the Wild Book Box. And my first thoughts are that none of these I would have picked for myself. The one that comes closest to it would be this one. So this one's the one I'm most looking forward to. Plus I love like nature writing and all things like flowers and trees and shit. This one I am nervous about, partly because of how big it is, partly because it's a series, but I did say surprise me and I'm going to maintain an open mind. I just kind of, it's more the I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of how big this book is. And then this one, I don't really feel strongly about either way. I feel like it could go either way for me. So we'll see, we'll see. So the next month, we are basically just gonna read these three books together and I'm gonna let you know what I think of them. Welcome to a very chill Saturday. I am starting off this vlog actually reading Skyward by um, Brandon Sanderson. And I did discover actually in the front cover a little note which says this month's wild book is Skyward. We chose this because you like science fiction, dystopian, female leads, good versus evil. Happy reading the wild book box. So it's cool that they like literally tell you why they picked this book for you. I thought this was a really cute touch. This is like a 500 page sci-fi dystopian space Thing. So wish me luck. Hi, so we're doing my makeup and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update on the Brandon Sanderson book. I read heaps of it in the first three days and I was really enjoying it, but then I got depressed. <laughs> Yay bipolar. Um, and I haven't read anything in two weeks. Um, I will say I was really enjoying it, but it's this funny thing of like when I'm reading it, I don't want to put it down. It's really fast paced, there's a lot of action. I'm very curious to see what happens. But when I'm not reading it, I don't feel compelled to pick it up. I think it's because the story is very interesting and fun. I feel like it's a fun book, but I'm really not all that emotionally invested in the characters. Like they're fine and like I care about them not dying. I don't know, I don't love them. You know what I mean? So I don't feel super compelled to pick it up. I only have like 50 or 60 pages left to go, I think. Welcome to a very wet, cold Sunday afternoon here in Melbourne. I have just finished <laughs> Brandon Sanderson, Skyward. I finished it last night and I cried. I'm not gonna lie. Not because of the book, just because of me. The first almost 450 pages I read in like three days. And then I got hella depressed and just stopped reading and stopped doing anything for like two, even more than two weeks. Yesterday I woke up feeling just a little bit better. So I thought, you know what? You've got 50 pages. Why not just see if you can finish it today and that can be the one thing you achieve today. And damn it, I did and I felt so good that afterwards I cried. <laughs> but that's enough about me. What about the book? The book, I actually quite liked. I really liked it. It was the sort of book that when I was reading it, I did not want to put it down. It was just so fast paced and there was so much going on, but it was so easy to follow. Like. I was scared with a big chunky book like this and like a well-known fantasy author. I don't know, I had in my head that this was going to be like really complex with so much world building. And although the world does feel substantial, it never feels overly complicated or needlessly complicated. And Brandon Sanderson's writing is just so clear and easy to read. It just feels like it's just telling you what's going on and how people are feeling. Like there's no flowery language here. I don't think there's really a page wasted in here. Everything, like there's something always happening. However, what I did find was that it was not hard for me to pick up, but I had to kind of convince myself like, okay, I, I want to get this book done. Like I should put some time aside to read it. So it took a little bit of motivation and effort for me to pick it up. And I think I realized by the end, a part of that is that although I really enjoyed the story, I don't think I could say that I love any of the characters. Like I like them well enough, but I don't feel particularly emotionally invested in them. So that's why I gave this four stars because it was a great read. I really enjoyed it. I think the best word I can think of to describe this book and my experience of it was fun. It's a really fun book to read. It's a good, strong, solid story that I am curious about, like curious enough to continue with the series. I've bought number two. So the next book I've decided we're gonna get stuck into is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And I feel like I've, I know this name. I don't think I've read any of this author's books before, but let me just Google. Ah, Madeline Miller has written Circe, that book that everybody was talking about a year or two ago. So I do recognize some of the character names on the back here as, you know, some pretty significant figures in Greek mythology. I don't know how to pronounce a lot of these properly though. So I'm gonna do my best. 
Um, you can make fun of me in the comments if you want, that's okay. Greece in the Age of Heroes. Patroclus, Patroclus, an awkward young prince has been exiled to the court of King Peleus and his perfect son Achilles. Despite their differences, Achilles befriends the shamed prince and they grow into young men skilled in the arts of war and medicine. Their bond blossoms into something deeper. Despite the displeasure of Achilles' mother, Thetis, 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 we'll go with Thetis, a cruel sea goddess. But when word comes that Helen of Sparta has been kidnapped, Achilles must go to war in distant Troy and fulfill his destiny. I am not like a big mythology buff. So like I vaguely sort of know the story of Troy, but like from a very rudimentary level. Basically that movie Troy with Brad Pitt is the extent of my knowledge. Is that offensive? So I will be reading this with very, very little knowledge of the story as it stands. Let's find out, let's get started. Hello friends, I am sitting down to film some videos so I figured while I was here I could update you on the Song of Achilles. Now I don't think I remember to mention but the little kind of um, piece of paper that was sent along with this book to explain why this book was chosen for me um, was because I said that I liked classics, award-winning and love. And I am pretty much halfway now, I'm at 160 pages. Basically so far the story is that Achilles is a really hot cool guy and Patroclus has been exiled from his family um, by his father the king and sent to live with Achilles family as like a ward or something. So he's no longer a prince, he's been stripped of that. But even though he's like scrawny and awkward he and Achilles just like really hit it off. And then they go live in the cave for a bit with a centaur to train and stuff. I have to say I was not loving the first maybe quarter of the book. I think it was a combination of the language and then also the love at first sight trope. I don't tend to really enjoy. For me it was just a little cringy sometimes. I don't know like romance. I enjoy romance. I'm sappy. I'm trashy for romance. But for me, I, it has to be believable. And the beginning of this just, it felt really cheesy. I'll read you a little something on page 25 that maybe you will think is beautiful. I thought it was a little cringy. It was the only time I saw Achilles. His days were separate, princely, filled with duties we had no part of. But he took each meal with us, circulating among the tables. In the huge hall, his beauty shone like a flame, vital and bright, drawing my eye against my will. His mouth was a plump bow, his nose an aristocratic arrow. Seated, his limbs did not skew as mine did, but arranged themselves with perfect grace as if for a sculptor. They're just so in love, like so in love and obsessed with each other. And there's like no tension between the two of them. Even when stuff that happens between them could be very challenging and interesting, it's not because they're so in love. However, I do appreciate that they have such like a strong connection. I do think there's something very beautiful about that. And I am finding it more interesting now that we're kind of heading towards the war of Troy. We're a long way from it yet, but it's that like that tension and that interest is certainly building. Honestly, I'm finding the sex scenes a little disappointing. I mean, on the back here, the Guardian apparently called it exciting and sexy. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just a bit of a, I, I like my sex scenes hot. These are very short and innuendo rather than specifics. Having said all that, I am really enjoying the writing for the most part and I am kind of getting more and more invested in this story, the two of them and their journey. And the stakes are starting to feel quite high with this future war in Troy. I am finding this to be one of those books where I can be reading for an hour but think it's only 20 minutes. Like it's going by very quickly um, and I think that it's, it's just very, very engaging, which is great. So let's get to some more reading. Hello friends, I am here to update you because I am waiting for press conference from Dan Andrews, our premier, about whether I will be going back to work this week. Um, so in the meantime, I thought I could update you on The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller, which I have just finished. Despite my kind of slower start with this book, I did end up really quite enjoying it by the end. I'd say for me, it picked up probably around halfway. That's not to say I wasn't enjoying it. I just wasn't like super invested, I suppose, particularly in Achilles and Patroclus's um, relationship. I don't know, to me that was probably the, the least interesting part of this book. I don't know, maybe I'm not as much of a romantic as I thought, but that sort of like obsessive, really intense love at first sight, true love thing just doesn't tend to do a lot for me if I'm honest. But once we kind of moved out of their youth and sort of started heading towards Troy and the war um, and then you know obviously what happens there that's kind of what I found a lot more interesting. And the further we go along the more invested Achilles became in his own I don't know, I suppose like reputation and status as a god. Sort of like he had to earn his godhood status through this war. And as a result, it's sort of like this battle between um, his godhoodness 
and his humanity. And that's actually the part of this book that I found the most interesting. So I can't say I loved it, but I really, really did enjoy it. And as for the book, even though we sort of like know what happens to Achilles, so we sort of, we do know roughly how this book ends. Well, I mean, I did, and I don't really know much about mythology. So I'm assuming most people do. The way the ending was handled, I did really enjoy. I think it, it was somewhat unexpected, as unexpected an ending can be about such a well-known myth. I don't know, I don't want to spoil it too much for anybody because I do think this is a book worth reading and I would recommend it, especially if you're interested in Greek mythology. And especially by the time I was about a third of the way halfway through, I was, I was invested and it was hard to put down. Obviously there was a lot of tension with the war itself um, and all of the kind of conflict that comes with that, but there was also just a lot of inner turmoil and conflict but like within Achilles, within Patroclus and then between the two um, that had a lot more to do with I don't know, their humanity and morality and uh, yeah, their values, I guess, as well. And who they each thought they were and who they should be. I don't know, for me, that was the most interesting and most touching part of it. So I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. Now we are on to the Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. Now this one I have already started. I got to about 90 pages during the reading rush. And this is the book that I thought going into this I would enjoy the most. But now that I'm 90 pages in, I have to say I'm struggling a little bit. So this was chosen for me uh, because I said I liked Australian lit, female leads and family. And certainly Australian books and novels is something I pri am prioritizing reading more of. So far though, the first 50 pages were rough going. It was very hard to get through. Basically, this is a story about a girl named Alice um, and she is living with her mum and her dad. Um, and her dad is hugely, hugely abusive towards Alice, but a lot more so her mother, although Alice has to witness a lot of that. And the first 50 pages are just kind of quite descriptive, detailed um, examples of Alice's childhood and the moments where her father has been abusive. But then something happens um, and Alice ends up going to live with her grandmother, who she's never met before. Her grandmother lives on and runs a native flower farm where other women who have had troubled lives um, come to live and work. All of that is to say I found the first 50 pages really quite difficult and now that we're at Alice's grandmother's place, I'm finding it a little bit slow and less interesting. But I shall continue and I will update you when I'm a little further on. Hello friends, I am back and I've read quite a bit this evening. I'm just past page 200. And I'm having a rough time with this book now. Honestly, after we spoke last, it did start picking up. Um, I was kind of getting more interested again in Alice's familial history. So we learn kind of a little bit about her family history through June, her grandmother. So we learn a little bit about Alice's mum and her dad, but also her great grandmother and kind of what happened to her. It's sort of this story of um, women in Alice's family who have all had kind of traumatic shit happen, more or less. <laughs> what I'm finding really annoying is that Alice and June just don't fucking talk. And we know a lot of this stuff as the reader, but Alice knows none of it because June refuses to talk to her about any of it. Of course, part of that is June's own trauma and her own fears of feeling like she didn't do the right thing at certain points and worrying that Alice will judge her for those or not forgive her. So like, I understand the emotional motivation behind that, but I'm realizing more and more as I read lots of different books that when the main tension in a story is simply that two characters won't communicate, I just get bored and I get frustrated. So yes, there are other sort of things going on, but for the most part, the tension and what is driving the story is the fact that Alice doesn't know a bunch of stuff that June won't tell her. And I'm just kind of getting a bit over it, a bit tired of it. Honestly, I, mm, I don't like DNFing books. I very, very rarely do it. But that is our update for now. Basically, I just really wish it was over already. We are finally done. The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart by Holly Ringland. I finished this last night and, oh, I can't lie, I'm glad it's over. Having said that, I am also glad I finished it. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. Let's talk about it for a minute. So I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to spoil this book for anybody who does want to read it. But for me, I didn't find this book satisfying as a whole. Aside from the issues I've already mentioned that I had with it, um, especially around the whole miscommunication being like the main driving force of this entire book. Another thing I realized 
that I was finding frustrating by the end was the lack of character development. Alice is our central character and I suppose she does have some character development in her own way although it doesn't feel particularly satisfying to me. But it's all the other characters. We're introduced to a lot of characters and we're given their backstories or at least you know hints of a tragic backstory or something. We're, we're given information about so many characters and this book covers the period of like two decades and yet all of these characters, some of whom we've met, like, you know, we've, we've known for these full two decades, none of them have any character development whatsoever. Every single person Alice meets when she's nine, if they're still alive by the end of the book, they are exactly the same um, by the end of the book. The midsection of this book is basically like white girl goes out to the outback to find herself sort of a trope. Now the author does address her decision to include like this kind of Aboriginal setting I suppose in the mid part of the book and she's chosen to like fictionalize the setting and a lot of things to ensure that um, You know she was respectful in her process and even though the book does kind of offer this It's not central to the story, but it takes the time to offer some sympathy I guess to the Aboriginal struggle um, and how tourists are very often quite disrespectful of the land on which they're visiting. Alice was still a white girl who showed up to the outback and got given a job without an interview and has no kind of self-awareness to recognize that maybe like there was an Aboriginal person who belonged to that that country who could have been paid a wage to talk to tourists about their stories and their land. You know what I mean? I know I sound like I'm being quite harsh on this book and I suppose I do have a lot of frustration. Um, there is a lot of frustration in both the whole miscommunication thing, the lack of character development, the white girl goes to the outback. So I didn't like this book and it took for me quite a bit of determination to get through it. However, I will say that I quite enjoyed a lot of the writing. I really like how Holly Ringland kind of evokes a sense of place and I enjoy like the very Australian-ness of her language. I also think that the way that Holly Ringland kind of tackled trauma and abuse and domestic violence, it was all very, very raw and it felt sincere and honest. Like it was telling the stories of these women in a very authentic way um, without victim blaming or any of that. Like I think, but still kind of really put forth like how people find themselves in that sort of situation and how often trauma does kind of repeat and there are cycles to these sort of situations of abuse for a lot of people. Of course, all of that abuse is very difficult to read about because it is quite explicit, the violence and the kind of gaslighting and emotional manipulation as well. But from my perspective, it felt well handled. So those are my thoughts on Alice Hart. I do think it's kind of funny reflecting on the fact that this was definitely the book I was most excited for. It is the one that I thought I would like the most. And in fact, it turns out to be the complete opposite. So this one gets a very uh, lukewarm two and a half stars. Meanwhile, these two were both resounding successes and unexpectedly so. I gave both four stars each. I realized that I didn't really explain what this book is about. I know I've spoken about it in a few different videos now, but I thought I'd give a brief like a rundown of the story. It's basically about um, this girl, Spin, um, who wants to become a pilot. She lives on a planet that is regularly attacked from space by an enemy named the Krell. We don't know much about the Krell uh, other than the fact that they just kind of come down in ships every now and then and shoot shoot um, the people that live on the planet. So the pilots of this planet are very important. They're more or less revered as heroes. And Spin's father was one, but he did something that has left him labeled a coward um, and Spin has kind of grown up in his shadow. And that reputation has made Spin becoming a pilot herself now that she's 17, very difficult. This book, unlike Alice Hart, has some great character development. It's all about these 17 year olds who kind of go in all gung ho, well some do, Spin does, very gung-ho. And throughout this book, learn a lot about themselves, each other, um, what they value, what's important to them. And it's just a really fun time. So I'm really glad that they included this one in the Wild Book Box, because there's no way I ever would have picked this up for myself, but I really did end up enjoying it. And like I said earlier, I have picked up the second one because I do want to continue reading this story. And then Song of Achilles, book number two. This didn't start out strong for me, but the further along I got, the more invested I became. I was trying to think about which book I prefer, and I honestly can't decide. This has made made me want to read Circe. I'd kind of heard of Circe and I've had a few people recommend it to me, but it's never been at the top of my list. 
still not at the top, but it's definitely like, you know, kind of, it's, it's on my radar now um, because I really enjoyed, especially the writing. I thought it was beautiful. So I do want to read more of Madeline Miller. So that gives us an overall average rating of 3.5 stars, which I think is really good. I found two new books that I really, really enjoyed, two new authors I really enjoyed and want to read more of that I never would have picked out for myself. And that is exactly what I went into this for, is to discover books and stories that I wouldn't otherwise have picked up. So I was really happy with this first month of the Wild Book box. My second box has just arrived and I'm so excited uh, to start month two. So hopefully we'll see you for a vlog in another month for my three new books with the Wild Book box. I'd love to chat with you in the comments about these books, especially if you've read any of them. Let me know what you think of them. Before I go, a big thank you to everybody over on my Patreon. I really do appreciate your support and all of the fun we have over there. Thank you. And a big extra special thank you to Tracy Timberman, Laurie, Lynette Brown, The Hales K and Carly Gravatt. And thank you if you got all the way to the end of this vlog. Thanks for hanging out with me. I will talk to you again soon and in the comments. Until the next video, much love. Bye.